history. This law of the army of the of uh, the Christian military is the law of um, the law of the law of um, not determining your own fate. Turn with me to Luke chapter seven. How many have bought some books? How many have, have not bought some books? Mercy, Lord. Mercy, 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 mercy. All right. How many intend to buy some books? Okay. How many intend to read the books when you sit on the toilet? How many intend to read some books when you sit on the toilet? In simple English. Amen. Very good. Now I'm telling you, if you follow my advice, the Lord will be with you. My son, listen to, hearken to my sayings. I said, my son, hearken to my sayings. Attend to my words. And you, you will live long. Amen. Luke 7 verse 1. When he had ended these saying, verse 2, a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. Amen. All right. Now, he sent unto him to heal his servant. When they came, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation and has built us a synagogue. And Jesus went with them, verse 6. And when he was not, not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying unto him, Lord, trouble now not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter into under my roof. Wherefore neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, and having soldiers, and having under me what? Having under me what? Having under me soldiers. I'm talking about the law of the soldier. The law of the army, or the laws of war. If you like, you can call it anything that makes you happy. But he said, I am a man under authority and I have soldiers under me. Not children, not civilians, not non-militarized Christians. Amen. Amen. And he said, I say unto one, go. I say unto one, go. And he goeth. And to another come, and he cometh. And to my servant do this, and he doeth it. <laughs> these are soldiers. And when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent returned to the house and found the servant whole that had been sick. Now, when you are a soldier, are you listening to me? You will have somebody in authority over you. I'll be talking about the law of authority and delegated authority after this. But someone will say to you, go. And you will go if you are a soldier. If you are not a soldier, when they say to you, go, you will ask, can I see you after church? Can we have a meeting about it? I want to discuss certain things. There are certain things, a lot of things have been occurring to me. I want to have a meeting with you. He said, I say to one, go. And then he goes. I say to another one, come. And he comes. And I say to another one, do this. And he doeth it. So if you are really part of an army, and part of the army of the Lord, then it's no more you who determines your fate, but the one above you who determines your fate. He says to you, go. And then you go. He says to you, come. And then you come. You don't, you don't say to yourself, come. Because if he says to you, go, and you say to yourself, come, then you don't move anywhere. So you don't determine your own fate anymore when you are in an army. Do you think that the, the soldiers, the Zimbabwean soldiers who are fighting in a uh, what's the place? Zaire, DRC. Do you think they like it? Do you think their families like it? Don't you think they think they are fighting a foolish war? To die a foolish death? It's a foolish war 
to die a foolish death for nothing. But you don't determine your own fate when you are a soldier. Your fate is... And I want to say that, you see, if the church was more militarized, I would be able to say, go. I would be able to look on the map and say, I can see there's nobody in uh, Petersburg. I can see there's nobody in Cape Town. Go. You, go to. It should not be a matter of, <laughs> this man, <laughs> I don't think he has run. No. It will not be a matter of, uh, when you say go, do you, do, you, do you know what it means? Do you know what, I've established my business here, this and that and so on. And it's because the church has become a group of lazy civilians. And what we call maturity is actually backsliding. Yeah. One pastor, he was sent from Ghana to, uh, I think it's one of the countries, the neighboring country. And the bishop called him and said, you've been in this country for some time. You have done well. I want you to go to another country. And he said, oh, eh, he's been there for some time. He has built the church. He has established the church and so on. And his wife has also set up a business there now. And it's like they are really, you know, thriving and flourishing and so on. And if I have to, I mean, go now, it really affects a lot of things and so on. And the, the pastor said, look, I am saying to you, go. Now that church, they, they, you see, there are different kinds of armies. Just like some armies, they don't have weapons. They don't have good uniforms. They don't have good boots. Depending on the army you come from. They don't have navy. They don't have ships. They don't have fighters. That's why the war in Liberia was so terrible. Because the government didn't have an air force. So when the rebels were coming, there was nothing to take them from the air. Pray that your country always has an air force. Once there's an air force... It always prevents rebels from advancing on, on certain fronts. Well, sometimes you get it. That if you can see them. And uh, what was I telling you? <coughs> so he said he was his wife was doing something, something, something. So he, he couldn't go. And uh, and that church, just like I said, there are different kinds of army. They they are, they are not very militarized. But we are far more militarized to me than, than they are. So the guy said that he, he didn't want to go. And then the bishop said, okay, you, you, you can be there. So the guy went back to church. And maybe in that church today, moved by certain spirituals. The pastor was there. <coughs> a certain member of the church had a... Uh, she was feeling sad. And... Uh, she wanted to kill herself. So she came to church. I think she was with the pastor. And even the pastor and so on, they went to drop her at home. And she had said that she was depressed. She wanted to kill herself. Before you, she realized, she had killed herself. When she killed herself, they came to arrest the pastor because in that country, when you know that somebody is going to commit suicide, you are supposed to say it or something. So... Before he realized they had arrested him, he was, now the pastor was in handcuffs. Now they were calling their bishop to come and save. Yeah, it's better you shout for substitution or mercy. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Exchange. <laughs> you get it. And you see, it's not an army. An army doesn't behave like that. An army doesn't do what it wants to do, what you want to do. If we are to operate properly, eh, I'll be able to say to you, look, go here. I don't look at what you are doing. And in fact, one time the Lord dealt with me very strongly. And he told me that we had changed so much. And that I was now not able to send people to poor places. And any time I send somebody and the place is not New York or it's not uh, uh, London or it's not something like that, then they don't want to go. But if I say go to a poor place, poor place, then it's like people, you know, I have to do this and I have to do that. And these are lay people. And I'm not talking about being paid by the church. I'm talking about lay people. People who are lay people. They work, they go to school, whatever. I should be able to send you. I should be able to say to you, be here. And you will find a job and manage to stay at that place. If it means going to school. All the pastors that I have sent, many of the places we have advanced as an army, 
we have advanced because people made extra efforts to be at those places. It's like, go there. Okay, you stay here. Not based on your wife's business, or based on your family, whatever you are doing, or based on any activity that you are doing, or your personal prosperity, but based on the fact that you don't determine your faith. I say to one, go, and he goes. I say to another, come, and he comes. I say to another, do this, and he doeth it. That's an army. He said, I am a man set an authority, and I have soldiers under me. Soldiers. Not children playing games. Soldiers. And that's what God is looking for. If we are to advance and we are to take South Africa and we are to take Zimbabwe, we don't need people who are playing games. We don't need people who are playing uh, prosperity games. It's like we are using whatever, just, I just want to be blessed and I just want to prosper and I just want to be with the people I know and uh, these are my friends and, and this is where I do my hair and this is where I do my nails and this is where, these are my old friends and uh, this is where I went to school and this is where I want my children to go to school and I want my children to speak a certain accent and I don't want my children to have certain other friends and, and this is what, what is wrong with you? What is what? The soldiers don't talk like that. Soldiers here. Go. He goes. Come. He comes. I'm prepared to do anything that I have to do. That must be your mind. That must be your heart. That must be your decision. I don't determine. It. I remember I spoke to one pastor. He had been sent from Nigeria to Ghana to, to, to pastor a church. And I asked him, Sir, when, how long are you going to be here? Very big church. He said, we don't determine it. We don't determine it. We don't determine anything about... And, and in that church, when they are transferring you, they will come to you, let's say like Sunday, the person who is transferred, uh, replacing you will just arrive on Sunday and inform you that you are being transferred. By Thursday, you are out. No time to do anything. Something, 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 winding up, something, No. Sunday they arrive. So if you are a thief or you are doing anything wrong in the church, they will arrive and that's when you find out that you are being transferred. And that church has really progressed in the, in the nations. Because it's a militarized church. You see, unless we are militarized, we can't do... You see, if, let's say, we are fighting, okay, and I'm fighting, let's say we are in Sierra Leone, and as I'm in Sierra Leone, I'm looking for diamonds. I'm not trying to fight. I'm looking for diamonds. I have, I have another aim. You get it? Then you are fighting. You, your aim is to fight and to win the war. This one, I'm fighting, but I also want some diamonds. And another person is fighting, but I also want, I've seen a certain girl that I want to marry. And you realize that the army has got different purposes. Different people with different aims and visions. So you realize that when you are saying to one, go, it becomes a problem. Because he's, he's there, he's got some serious diamond connection in Sierra Leone. So now you are transferring him to Liberia. It's a big problem. It's a big problem because he's established and he has got his lines for the diamonds. And that's what happens to the church. Just a little prosperity. Just a little prosperity is all that it takes to deflect us and remove us from the army. And suddenly there's no more militarized army. And our church is becoming more and more militarized. This thing that I'm preaching, I've been preached it at a lot of places, but I think I have to preach it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to preach it. Yeah, this is what we need to hear. Oh yeah, this is what we need to hear. That if you are a real soldier, you don't determine your fate. Somebody determines your fate for you. And if you are a real soldier, that's another law. The law of purpose. We have one purpose. Not that you are looking for diamonds. I am looking to win a war. You are looking for a wife. You are looking for a girlfriend. You want to stay with your girlfriend. And we have different aims and visions. And that is the reason why we want to now determine our own fate. Because the law of purpose is also not working. Because you have a different vision. I have a different vision. I am trying to do this. You are trying to make money. You are trying to get diamonds. I am trying to win a war. And it's like we, 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 we are always having some kind of conflict. Because your wife's business is now prevalent in this place. And so now because of your wife's business, when I ask you to go so that for the improvement of the army, you don't want to go. Mercy and grace forever. I said grace and atonement. Oh, 
How is South Africa going to be won? By people who don't determine their fate. I, at this camp meeting, I should be able to say to the shepherd, and, and it's unfortunate. I mean, Isaac is not here. Oliphant is not here. France is not here. Zama is not here. Who else are not here? McDonald's is not here. Anno is not here. Dr. Mills is not here. Caroline is not here. Most of the old people who are here, who I should be able, who have, who have been at the camp before, Uh, And I should be able to say to you, go. But many of you are even new. You get what I'm saying? You are even new. So I'm now even beginning to train you and get you even to have certain uh, ideas. But some of the other ones who I should have been able to say to you, come on, go. And she'll say, yes, pastor. It means I'm going and I'm going. That is the only thing that it means. I don't care about my job and my school and my this and that. And I believe that as I go, that God is going to provide. I'll get a job and I'll be able to be there. And everything is going to work out. Now where are the troops? Where are the soldiers? Those of you from Swaziland. Are there other towns apart from... What's the name of your town? Manzini. Are there other towns apart from Manzini? Are there places with people? Swazi, stand up. All those from Swaziland, stand up. You came to enjoy, isn't it? Or you came to be soldiers? Mercy, Lord. Mercy, mercy. You came to be happy, to listen to jokes. Do you see me as a clown? I am teaching you the word of God. I am training you to be soldiers. I am telling you to fight. Paul said, I have fought. I have been fighting. And he wants you to be a fighter. And if you are going to be a soldier, you will not determine your life. Somebody will determine your life. Somebody on earth will determine your life. And that person... Would, be, would also be, have an authority over him. Swaziland can be taken. Very soon there can be 17 churches in Swaziland. All over. Yeah. Very soon there can be 17 churches all over Swaziland. Because you people, you will be pastors. You will go there, you will, know, you will not... Stand up, Pastor Nia Jadu. You are, where are you? In Bindura. In Bindura. Uh, before you went to Bindura, have you started a church before? Yes, in Takrari. In Chakradi, you started a church. Okay, and then in Bidura, you also started a church. Yes. And, and uh, uh, what is your, your, your secular profession? Um, accountant. Accountant. He's an accountant. An accountant has started two churches in his life. When he dies right now and he goes to heaven, do you think his accounts are what they are going to use? It's the churches and the work that he's done that is going to, 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 to work for him. And by virtue of the fact that his job, they sent him to Takrade, he started a church. His job sent him to Bindura, he started a church. And, and somebody who is an accountant has become a pastor doing the work of the Lord. And you are sitting down watching us. God is raising you up as soldiers. That when you go, God is saying to you, do this, and he doeth it. Now he argues about it. Or he says that I'm busy. Do you know how busy he is? Are you not a boss in your mind? He's the director of money. In a whole mind. Yeah? Very high level. Yet he has time to have crusades. And you, you are the director of what? At your workplace. Mercy and grace. <laughs> Amen. What are you? So Swazis, I'm telling you something. If we are militarized, some of you will transfer yourself from Manzini. Or your pastor can sit down with you and he will not be afraid. Because our people are not soldiers, that is why we are afraid to suggest to them to go to certain places. We are afraid to even bring up the idea. Because when we bring up the idea, it's like you are spoiling somebody's life. It's because we are not soldiers. We are non militarized civilian play around Christians. Bless me, believers. Give me more, Lord. Give me something else, Lord. I want more money. I want another phone, Lord. Can I have a... I've seen a new type of phone. Lord, I want a smaller phone. Lord, my phone is too big. Lord, I've seen a special... The latest type has come. Lord, I want a car. Lord, I want a better car. Lord, I want more. Lord, I have a beloved. But I want another beloved. And you are never satisfied.
And all your life is spent searching for things. And when the command, when the pastor sees you, he's afraid. Because me too, I'm afraid to tell people who are not soldiers, go. When, when I said that, soldiers go, they will ask me, did you buy my ticket to come here? Did you bring me here? How can you say I should go? When I go, will you look after me? That's what is in their mind. They will ask you in their head, did, did, you, did, you, did you, are you the one who brought me here? Will you pay for me to go? So when I go and what, what, something happens to me there, will, 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 what will you say? But in an army, you must be able to say, go. And you must know that your faith is determined not by you. How many soldiers do we have in the house? Are you people going to be soldiers? Are you going to be soldiers? Do this and he does what? Do and he does what? He doeth it. I say, when I say do, say he doeth it. Do. Go. Say. Come. That's all. I said do. Come. Go. Say. Do. Go. He goeth. He cometh. He doeth. He saith. Go and he goeth. Come, he cometh. Say, he saith. Stay, he stayeth. Die, he dieth. Mercy and grace. You can't determine where you want to go. Even if they say die, and you know you are going to die. Jesus died. His father sent him die. And he came and he died. When he was, when, 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 when he was going to go to the cross and uh, they were trying to stop him, he, he said, no, the cup that my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Eh? The cup that my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Shall I not drink it? Shall I not drink it? The cup that my father has given me, shall I not drink? What are you trying to do? Stop what you are doing. He just healed them. Self the man's here. You are trying to attack. And Peter, Peter took his sword to fight. Peter didn't understand a lot of things. He was moving around, but he didn't understand a lot of things. Fighting. Jesus, Peter told him, Look, if my kingdom of... Jesus told Pilate, he said, if my kingdom of this world, my servants will fight. My servants will fight. He, he told Peter, stop what you are doing. You are spoiling the church. Die and he died. Go. Come. Stay. Speak. Die. Come. Do. That's you from today. I said, that's you from today. I said, that's you from today. I said, that's you from today. And if they send you somewhere, you don't say, oh, I'm, dead, I'm, I'm established here, you know, I'm this and that here, this is my hairdresser, this one. No. You don't talk. That's, that's a civilian way of talking. My children go to school here. My this, that's here. My that, that, that. My this, this, that. that, that. No. Just do it. And the Lord will be with you. And you'll be surprised. That's how come South Africa can be filled. Within five years... I said, within five years, there can be uh, uh, over 50 churches scattered all over South Africa. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very, very real, real and possible and practical. Very practical. Swaziland. Swaziland is possible. You see, our brethren from uh, DRC. Yeah, you're from DRC, aren't you? And that's your husband right there. Yes. If you were soldiers, your pastor could say to you, you know, you've been with me for some time. Go back to DRC. And then you say, yes, pastor. But if you are not soldiers and he says to you, go, you may ask him and say that, you, would you go to an army? If he says, would you go to a place that they are fighting a war? And you ask him, look at you and your wife. Would you go to such a place if they are fighting a war? If you wouldn't go, why do you ask me to go to such a place? Your face! So you realize that we are not so. How many realize that in the church people are not soldiers at all? How many realize that people are not soldiers at all? We are not soldiers at all. That is why the church doesn't move, it doesn't expand. And God described his church as a river flowing, going somewhere, always flowing, flowing, a river of life flowing from heaven. 
rivers of living water flowing out. The church is always on the move. The Spirit of God and the Spirit of God moved. Move. God is a moving God. God is a moving God. The Spirit of God moved over the darkness. There is darkness and there is movement spiritually. Not stagnation. Not staying at the same place. I am not at the same place I used to be. Even a year ago, where I am today, I am not where I was just one year ago. Adele, Adele, stand up. How many years have you known me? Which year? 19 what? 1982. Am I the same as you saw me in the 20 years ago? Not at all. What, what have I changed? Big time. What does that mean? Big time. What does big time mean? <laughs> Mercy and grace and atonement. Spiritually, I'm talking about the spiritual. Why are you talking about? <laughs> she's not a good soldier. <laughs> she's not saying the things that she's supposed to say. <laughs> you can ask her. She was my wife's roommate in school. I've been a fellowship leader. I've been doing dumb broadcasting, preaching this, that. I've been going on the trail for years. And I always see because God's spirit moved. The spirit of the Lord moved over the darkness. Out of your belly shall flow. God is a flowing, moving God. Out of the, uh, the throne comes a river of life. There's always a flow. You, you, if you are staying at the same place, there's something wrong with you. And that is why in the army there's always a go and then come and then go and come and stay and do and do he do it. it it's not the same. There's a flow. There's always an improvement, a building up of God's work and of God's church. You are not supposed to be the same. You are supposed to be better. You are supposed to be more anointed. You are supposed to be more mature. You are supposed to be more militarized. You are supposed to be more anointed and deeper in God. As you go along, step by step, step by step, step by step, step by step. I am more of a soldier now. Me, I, th- I don't know. I don't want to say things that I don't know. But I think that I'm ready to die for God. Seriously. And if I'm told that I should die, I think it's something that I'm ready for. Yeah. If they said I have to die for what I believe. And it's not easy. It's easy to say, but it's not as practical as doing it. It's not easy as practically. You may say something, 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 something. When the thing comes, you'll be wee on yourself and say that I don't mean Joy, this idea. But some of you are not even prepared to stay unmarried for God if it means you should not marry an unbeliever. You are not prepared to do that. You will marry the unbeliever. You will. Because you will do what you want to do. But I pray and I see you becoming a true soldier. Never, never, never be annoyed. When you hear an instruction that is changing your faith, that is not what you, your, you determine for yourself. Don't be angry. Receive it. Flow like a soldier. And tell yourself, I am a soldier. I don't determine what I want to do. But why? Why? Because you see, let's say in this army, I am the general. So I can see that we are losing the battle here. And I can see that I've got three troops here. And I know that I need to take one of my troops there. But when I say to this one troop, go there, then he says to me that his wife's business has now become established. It is nonsense. You have not understood the reason why you are, you've not understood that you are a soldier. Your wife's business, what are they? The purpose is not your wife and her business. The purpose is the war that we are fighting and what we are trying to accomplish. So when you start to tell me that your wife's business and your wife's work and your wife's school and your wife's whatever, then you have misplaced your whole priority. You don't understand what you are doing. Tell somebody, I don't determine it anymore. Amen. Sit down.